In this module, we'll be discussing measures of central tendency. There are two types of statistical methods. One are descriptive and other are inferential. So far, we have been talking about descriptive methods. These descriptive methods help us to describe our data. To describe our data, we have learned about the graphical measures. Then there are numerical measures. Among these numerical measures, there are frequency distributions. The other methods which are commonly used are the summary measures. There are two types of summary measures that we use to describe our data. They are called measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. In this module, we'll be talking about the measures of central tendency. The tendency of observation to cluster in the central point is called central tendency. The measures which help us to measure this tendency of clustering along the central point are called measures of central tendency. In layman's term, a measure of central tendency is an average. It is a single value which can be considered typical in a set of data as a whole. Generally, it's not very easy to, to talk about the measures of central tendency in a graphical way. Let's consider an example to describe this average. That if we have some data and we plot it on a graph, and this specific type of chart is called a scatter plot. If we want to see a va if, we, if we want to describe this whole data points with only one value, we will tend to describe something that is right in the middle of it. This value is kind of equidistant from uh, in, in aggregate from all the values. So such type of values help us to measure where the exact the center is. These measures of central tendency are also known as measures of location, and they are very famously known by average. In another example, in a class of 40 students, the average height would be the typical height of the members of this class as a whole. Different types of measure of central tendency are mean, median, and mod. Mean is further described as arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and harmonic mean. And all these measures have different usage. Arithmetic mean is the most familiar measure of central tendency. It is obtained by adding all the values in a population or a sample and dividing it by the number of values that are added. Any measure that comes from the population is called a population parameter. And if we calculate arithmetic mean from the population, it is known as mu. Mu is a Greek letter that is used to represent arithmetic mean for the population. This mu equals to summation i varies from 1 to n, capital Xi divided by capital N, where these, this n represents the population size. And these Xi's represents ith observation in the population. And if we add up all the ith, all the observations in the population and divide them by the number of observations which have been added, it will give us the average, the arithmetic mean, which is commonly known as the mean. Similarly, if since we already know that we cannot study the population all the time, therefore we rely on the sample results. So when we calculate the sample mean, we represent it by x bar. x bar equals sum of the, all the observation in the sample. This xi represents sample, sample observations divided by capital N. And just make this correction. This is capital X. And this small x i represents ith observation in the sample. Whereas this n denotes sample size. So while calculating the arithmetic mean, we can 
see that if we represent few values on this number line, So, for these five values, if we can see, this is the center most observation, this value will be called x bar, which is the arithmetic mean. But if we add just one observation over here, which is a bit away from the center, mean will shift toward this value and we'll get a new center, which is x bar, a new x bar due to this observation. And similarly, if we add one observation over here, the mean will shift from this, from this to this. So the mean is something that actually is very much affected by the observations because it includes each and every, every observation in the data. So let's see an example that if we have the white blood cell counts of five patient enter in the dengue ward in a particular hospital in Lahore. We wish to calculate the average cell count in these five patients. The first patient, which will be called X1, has the cell count of 4,500. The second patient has X2, which is 4,900. Third patient will be represented by X3, which is 3,730. And similarly, fourth patient and five, fifth patient will have certain cell counts. To, if, you, if you wish to calculate the mean out of these five, for these five values, it is going to be x bar, which is sum i varies from 1 to n, xi divided by n, which is the sum of all the observations, which is x1 plus x2 plus x3, x4, x5 divided by 5, and this all adds up to 27,863. And if we take, if we divide this sum by the number of observations, since we, we added five observations, we will divide it by five, and the answer turned out to be 5,572.6 cell count. This value is an average value, which represents all these five values given above. The way we interpret this average is that there are, all these five patients have average cell count of 5,572.6. Arithmetic mean has multiple properties. The first one is its uniqueness because for the given data set, there's only one and only one arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean is easy easily understood and easily calculated. That's why it's one of the most common measure of central tendency. Hence, it is simplistic. The arithmetic mean is the most reliable measure of central tendency since it takes into account every item in the data set. It is used only if the data are measured on interval or ratio scale. And further, we will be discussing this, this property in the next module. Since arithmetic mean takes into account of each and every value in the data, therefore extreme values also have a strong impact on the arithmetic mean. This is one of the drawbacks of arithmetic mean, that it has a tendency to move towards the extreme values. Arithmetic mean also have few mathematical properties. The first one among those is that some of the deviation of all the observations taken from the arithmetic mean is always going to be zero. That if we know from the previous data that our arithmetic mean is 5,572.6, and if we subtract this average from each cell count, we will see we are going to get some numbers, and if we add them all up, the sum is going to be equals to zero. Moreover, the sum of the square deviations of the observations taken from the arithmetic mean is always going to be minimum. That if we take any other value, which is not arithmetic mean, and take the deviations from each observation, this sum is definitely going to be higher. Over here, if we see that sum of the deviations of observation and the if we square them up, the value is, is, is going to be 12857175.2. But if instead of x bar, which is 5572.6 here, if we use any other value, let's say 5578, this value is definitely going to be smaller than when we use 8, 5578 here in the deviations. Hence, 
the deviations, square deviations, are always going to be minimum if they are taken from an arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean is most commonly used measure of central tendency. The other measures are median and mod, which we will be discussing next. Thank you.